So the goal is to have enough money to send astronauts back to the moon. We think we will land at the end of 25. Is a 2025 moon landing realistic? No. That's our plan. $93 billion. Yes. Space flight is expensive. This is the return to the moon. Oh my gosh. We've been there in, in 50 years. Oh my gosh. Well, let's find out. Yeah, you gotta go there first to go before you go there a second time. Okay. <laughs> so. The revived moon program has had to deal with massive delays and giant cost overruns that threaten to ground it. The Artemis program is years behind schedule and billions over budget, $40 billion. I think NASA has a reasonable level of importance somewhere between Halloween and feeding your pets. This big gold-plated rocket may be aiming for the moon, but it also may be headed the way of the dinosaurs. I'm Xi Jinping, I am the head of China and the moon. The moon belongs <laughs> to us. Uh, yeah, oh, no, that's kids. not. That's you not guys allowed. are killing me. Are you kidding me? China plans three moon mining missions in the next 10 years after finding a potential new source of energy and seeking long term partners. China and Russia announced in March 2021 that they're teaming up on an ambitious project called the International Lunar Research Station, ILRS, which, like Artemis, aims to set up a base near the moon's south pole. There's always this kind of tension between the U.S. and China in, in many different uh, areas of, of life and economy, and I guess space is no exception to that. Some of the, the sort of geopolitical concerns around the space station are a little bit overblown. I think in terms of, uh, like, for example, a lunar research base or just, you know, human exploration of the moon, that could be a little bit more strategically concerning just from the in the sense that like we're hearing a lot now about china and russia having a joint moon research base and that would be you know it would represent a significant threat i guess to the sort of u.s space dominance up until now i think so china has ramped up its ambitions in space and this doesn't sit well with nasa uh, do you want for example to china land all of these missions that they're planning on the South Pole, which is the place where there should be a lot of ice and therefore you have fuel and you have oxygen. Well, what happens if they suddenly get there and we're not there? And they say, no, it's an exclusive economic zone. You can't come in. And they could land and they would say, this is our exclusive territory, you stay out. Uh, so you always want to be prepared. I don't think the United States wants to be second on anything. Mr. Nelson is looking for more money for NASA, but uh, using this kind of uh, sort of fear mongering, I don't think is a good way to go about it. And they're just blank statements like Mr. Nelson's. They're just laid out there um, with nothing in the way of, of specific evidentiary support in order to really um, make such charges. And people, I think, should be responsible and held responsible when they do it. It is not the first time that the NASA chief disregarded the fact and talked through his hat. Some US officials constantly make false charges against and vilify China's normal and legitimate outer space explorations. China firmly opposes such irresponsible remarks. Despite the controversy, lunar plans are set and moving forward. How is this going to happen? Watch China's ambitious schedule right here. The reconnaissance by 2025, the Chang'e 4, the Chang'e 6, and the Chang'e 7, and the Luna 25, 26, and 27. These are six complete missions. Once setup is complete, moon exploration can begin via remote sensing in situ detection of water. Once complete, samples will then be returned to Earth. Some possible scientific site locations are the following. Between 2026 and 2030, construction begins conducting corroborative exploration and technology verification. Between 2031 and 2035, China will also embark on lunar missions 
to construct a command center, installing energy and communication facilities. And let's not forget the lunar-based scientific exploration facility. Further, verify in situ utilization of resources. After 2036, the utilization phase begins. The strategy of long-term scientific exploration will begin, including resource utilization. This will enable China to support short-term human missions to the moon. I, I think we are in a little bit of a moon race, even if no one admits it publicly. Uh, China has has met good on every one of their promises when they said we're going to put a astronaut, a Taikonaut into orbit. They did that. Uh, uh, they're going to build a space station. They're doing that. And so declare they want to go to the moon. We should really take them seriously. And like I said, geopolitics is, is some of the strongest drivers of why nations go into space. If China is able to establish a permanent lunar presence, it will also render the manufacture of space-based solar-powered SBSP stations vastly cheaper. It's ongoing activity uh, in China. Well, China is expecting uh, a prototype next year. We know that um, the Chinese are working on this. Uh, the idea of harvesting sunlight in space and delivering it wirelessly to markets here on Earth. So in space, you would convert incoming sunlight, usually with photovoltaic cells, just like we do here on Earth, into electricity. That electricity would be converted into microwave energy transmitted from antennas and sent in a coherent beam to a targeted location on Earth where the microwaves would be converted back into electricity and it would be distributed just like energy from an Earth-based PV array into the electrical grid uh, at the receiver. The receiver would be a lot like a, a metal cloth fence, transparent fence, a bit like a large fishing net with these little T-shaped antennas every four or five inches. This is also incredible because you can sell this energy to other countries. You can point it anywhere. So if, if you don't need it in the UK, why don't you sell it to New Zealand, sell it to Australia, sell it to some place else around the world? We talk about sustainable and renewable. Sustainability means being able to make some money so you can continue to fund these types of initiatives. An experimental power plant being constructed in Chongqing, in the southwest of China, and there have been uh, low altitude tests of transmitting power via microwaves. It's hard to see if they are very serious about actually seeing this project which will be completed by around the middle of the century. Maybe getting something into low Earth orbit in 2025. By 2050 having this kind of 10,000 ton space power plant in orbit. We don't get to see China's decision making process and the budgeting like you do with the US with its space activities. A space based photovoltaic cell would generate 40 times more power annually than an Earth-based solar cell. Solar power installations can be manufactured on a moon base from silicon and aluminum, obtained from, among other sources, asteroids and lunar mining. That would be far less expensive than lifting materials and equipment into space from Earth-based launch sites. The Chinese government plans to construct a 1,000 kilowatt solar power station demonstration in low Earth orbit by 2025 with the long-term goal of constructing a fully operational commercial space-based solar power system by 2050. Whoever obtains the technology first could occupy the future energy market. Ouyang Xiang, who's the head of their lunar program, mentioned that the reason why China is establishing a lunar program is because there are these resources on the moon. It is very significant because China is the only country that has an active mission on the moon today. The impact of that on Earth is if you're able to get back those resources in a logistics system which we are planning, is to tip the scale in terms of resource scarcity. You realize, okay, you want to see a lunar colony develop, okay, you cannot bring everything from Earth. You want to be able to produce it locally on the moon and, and then the critical part that you really need is energy. An isotope of helium 
Helium-3 has applications in national security, medicine, and cryogenics. Recent helium shortages have forced some research labs to suspend their projects and induce national security concerns. In short term, we should focus on helium and water. Helium because it's not readily available on Earth, and water because it has a potential use in space. Water is actually one of the most valuable materials in space, and NASA has confirmed deposits of ice inside deep craters near the lunar sunk pole. Water extracted from the moon converted into oxygen and hydrogen, which, when combined, make a powerful rocket propellant. This could in turn enable the exploration of more distant destinations like mineral-rich objects in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. The capacity to mine titanium, helium-3, silicon, and aluminum, large-scale production of a space-based solar power array and a space-based support network for missions to destinations including Mars, Jupiter, and asteroids. But any sort of competition is always viewed as a threat. Is China and Russia building the final frontier in space for wars of the future? If you've liked what you've seen in today's program, please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. Reportify Media.